back. Unanimous gold mine. Ichiron <laughs> Chabose. Oh, thank you. Thank you for sharing this with us. <laughs> thank you for inviting us. It feels uh, completely surreal to be here, and, and we're so grateful for each and every one of you here. So thank you. Well, I think for all of us who had a chance either today or, in my case, a few months ago to experience this work, it, it, um, it stays with you. And I find myself uh, thinking about it frequently, and I've been looking forward to the opportunity to sit down with the two of you to talk about it. And if we have a few minutes, I'll invite a couple questions from our audience as well. Um, I understand that the, the broader piece of art, the broader work that contains and includes this film, um, began originally as a graphic novel and a, and a musical together. Uh, maybe you could share with us a little bit of the, the origin, the birth of course, see yes. where this comes from. Yes, uh, it's true that this piece is conceived as a graphic novel, which is still in play. Actually, the name of the graphic novel is Martin Luther King. It comes out through first, second books in uh, 2022. And, uh, and we originally conceived of uh, the story as a stage musical. Um, we wanted to take it to Broadway. Uh, and we started working on the script, uh, Nizi and myself, and um, and we had uh, producers um, that, that uh, by the way, you know, uh, some of our producers are here. Uh, Mr. Stephen Hendel, uh, Juliet and Walter Pryor, we want to thank them. Um, yes, we had, we had producers that, that said, uh, you know, this sounds like a great vision. I'd feel more comfortable supporting if it were a film. And you know, maybe we spent a few months being resistant, and then slowly it dawned on me like, this could be a fucking awesome film. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so, well, let me let me take a step back. Tell me about how the two of you first met, and then let's talk about some of the early conversations you had, Anisia, about uh, some of the ideas we start to see. We, we, we you were exploring at the very beginning of the process. Um, so we met on. Um on a film of Alain Gomis uh, called Te uh, in Senegal. Um, and um, some of the inspiration of, of, uh, for this film actually um, came to your mind so while we were shooting that movie in Senegal, uh, in Dakar. Um, and I think uh, what was, um, of what was, blonde, what was um, outstanding for you over there was that um, young kids would be out there with super modern technology like beats and headphones computers, and headphones, yeah. and you know, um, and then um, at six o'clock, at six p.m., they would go and rehearse like the traditional drums together, and so there would be that mixture between um, that tradition and that technology and modernity. And so I think that's something that, um, yeah. yeah. That, was, that was definitely one of the, uh, the starting points of, 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 you know, it's at the moment when I was first starting to learn um, also about uh, Colton and, and the precious minerals, you know, that are found uh, within our smartphones and laptops and drones and, and you know, uh, and making the connection between that and, and the history of those resources from sugar to cotton to, you know, all of these things. And, uh, and then, yeah, while we were in Senegal seeing people, uh, young kids, you know, like with Beats headphones and building drums was like, it was just a, a beautiful juxtaposition and thinking uh, of, of the fact that that so much of our modern day technology is is still based on this sort of analog exploitation um, and and this, that was one of the influences yeah and then we he, we started to talk about I mean it's about that time also that you had the um, Arab Spring you had so much things going on with you know, um, anti-gay laws across the continent that were pretty much sprung from American evangelicals that would go to countries and say we dangle money and say we want to give money, mm -hmm. you know, to your to your country. Um, but if you pass this gay law, which they wouldn't pass here, um, but uh, you know, this anti-gay law, then then 
we get to see it in action. And you were seeing these sorts of things happening. And so there were a lot of things that were like bustling up. And the question was, how can we talk about all of this stuff at once? Without and reaching? it was all happening also at once on our, you know, feet. Timelines. Timelines. Yeah. So that was, um, um, yeah, an interesting. Um, so then there was also that question of um, e-waste camp, right? Yeah. That was a huge thing. Another huge discovery was the discovery of e-waste camps. So then the realization that, you know, the question of where does our tech go to die? And learning about these huge village-sized camps where you would find old laptops, monitors, towers, and all this stuff. And, and the people that would make a living, um, you know, scavenging there to retrieve copper or whatever they could from computer waste. Um, and so thinking of the idea between like, well, the stuff that's used to build the computers is mined from the ground and then when the computers after they've been used they're brought back like the planes that fly out the minerals fly in the e-waste and and so those connections were and so the the village of digitaria was born of that id yeah, exactly. so what would young people you know um that you know would what would they talk about and what would they do with um with those two antagonism, right? With sleeping on the richest mineral and then also being surrounded by, you know, the, the rest of it, of it, right? So it's, um, yeah. 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 <laughs> share with us, uh, you touched on it a second ago, and share with us more about the origin of this, this, this name, this term, is it Mart Martyr Loser King? Yeah, and where that came from, there's a story behind it. <laughs> um, you know, um, at the time I was living in Paris, and and um, and so someone with their French accent actually had said something like, uh, you know, uh, yes, we we love you know uh, the 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 work of Martin Luther King. And, <laughs> and and uh, I was like, I knew what they meant, but I was like, <laughs> that's kind of interesting. And so first, I mean, actually, I don't, I don't know if I've shared this story before, but the first thing that came up at the time, I was asked by Nickelodeon to write some, um, some poems for Black History Month that would air on Nickelodeon. And so I had written some some children's poems imagining kids were like, Martin Luther King, we learned about, you know, like this sort of thing. And uh, and my my book agent, literary agent, loved it and was like, we need to do a whole book on this. And and the letters that she received of people offended. Um I still kept working on it. And so it turned into this, you know, then I was learning about like these hackers with names like Gucci fur and <laughs> what have you. And I was just like, okay, we got to have some, you know? And so, yeah, so it's then just a play on hearing, you know, as you see there, it's like Matalusa is Matalusa, but what Neptune hears, you know? Let me ask you to, to share with us, there, there's, there's so much, the imagery, the sounds, the combinations of all of those mixed with the design approach that you're taking. I would love to know from each of you, before we talk a little bit more about um, your collaborators, I'd love to know about some of the creative works that shape, that have shaped you. What have been creative works in your life that have, that when you look back were sort of like touchstones or turning points or, or illuminating moments in your own kind of creative development. Well, for for this for this film, I was really um, um, we were really talking about yeah that that you know place between technology and um, um, economy, right? And so um, works that 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 talk to me at that point were like. Um, people who were making films with um, uh, very few lights, for instance, uh, key lights, um, who were um, uh, developing a universe um, around almost nothing. And so um, Wonka Wei was definitely somebody that I 
really uh, that that really inspired me also for his use of um, colors and um, the the you know the the feelings that he gave that he's giving in using colors uh, how to reach um, a mood how to reach uh, um, you know an id uh, through colors and I I, I I do yeah it was really important for me and also f um, in the approach of um, filming those skins and 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 that decor and that greenery and all of that it was really inspiring um, I was really inspired too by um, by Yenas, the film of um, uh, Mamberti, you know, uh, for its way, its narration. Really, fast. I mean, it's it's very um, uh, a very interesting, intricate story, um, but super simple nonetheless. And I thought it was really um, the the color palette is just beautiful, also, and I, I thought it was really free. And and I, I was also inspired by, by yeah. How how do you free a space? How do you how do you express that? Um, yeah, Tarkovsky, of course, mm -hmm. um, for the science fiction side. Um, I, with nothing, how can you you know emulate a space that is out of space and and nonetheless very much present? Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. And if you haven't figured it out, Anisia is not just the co-director, but she was the director of photography as well. Um, <laughs> for me, um, I grew up in New York, um, I, I, and <laughs> my references um, are not as cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, th there are things, you know, like there's, there's the artisanal quality of Jesus Christ Superstar, the film, you know, so that when you see those actors arrive on a bus and put on their costumes in front of you and you see the swords made of aluminum foil and all of this stuff, but by the time the thing gets going, you're in it. That was always has been something very important for me in terms of how to just do that slight trick, you know. Um, uh, then there's stuff like, uh, you know, I wanted to, to, to have a film where, where people might feel compelled to move and what have you. And I had an amazing experience uh, in, in Newburgh, New York, where I grew up um, as a kid. Um, yeah, when Beat Street was in the, the hip hop classic Beat Street was in theaters. Um, it was it was on screen in Newburgh, and I remember that you know in front of the stage, like here, there was a wooden in front of the screen. There was a wooden stage, and while we were watching the film, all the local break dance crews were breaking. Mm -hmm. So we were watching people break and the film at the same time, and I'm just like that energy which is still the craziest shit I've ever seen. <laughs> you know, there's that. Um, then there's uh, Serafina, uh, which I saw on Broadway like seven times. And so the fusion of music, politics, the question for me has always been like, as music progresses, you know, and, and, and you know, we bring hip hop to the stage and all this stuff, why don't we bring the music too? Like, why do we have to have the, pack the sound packaging of Roger and Hammerstein? Why can't, it, why can't we have 808s? Why can't it be more hardcore? You know what I'm saying? And so those were goals and references for me, there's a lot more we could talk about, but it starts there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, of course, we only have five minutes left, but I want to get questions from the audience and give you a chance to engage with our artists on, on this stage. If you rate, okay, I can see a hand right here. Hello. Question is about how the impact of knowing that someone can watch this again. It's it's a great question about yeah. so the lo longevity of a creative a creative work when you decide to adapt it to the screen or the cinematic form versus a, a, a play or something else that might be might people might not have the ability to go back and experience it. How did you think about that? Yeah. I mean, once we dove into the idea of this story as a film, we dove all the way in. 
right? The yeah. amount of time, the, the, the color palettes, the lookbooks, the, the collection of images and ideas. I promise you, you didn't see everything that's in this film. You probably didn't check the shoes, the wooden statues as guns. <laughs> There's so much stuff. So yes, we definitely were thinking about repeated viewings and, think, and, and, and also the, the, the idea of archiving and documentation, you know, the fact that, that, that you know, we, shot, we started shooting on February uh, 3rd, uh, 2020, and we wrapped on March 4th, 2020. Rwanda shut down on March 8th, 2020, okay? Um, when we flew back with the hard drives and finally after a bit got to see the dailies and were like, okay, because we didn't have time while we were shooting to actually see the dailies, the fact that it was there, like, oh shit, it's there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and for me, there is the there is that beautiful um, feeling that I have with a film that is that we were able to film in Rwanda and to film those actors, and so also to bring Rwanda here is 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 that what film can do, and it's very beautiful for me. Yeah. Yep. For all of us. In, in, in just the couple of moments we have left, a couple of minutes we have left, uh, I want to give you an opportunity to shout out. There's so many names we saw on the screen, it's yeah. not fair to ask you to pick just you know, a couple, but shout out some of your key collaborators and what, um, what they brought to the, to the process. There's a couple that I think. Yes. <laughs> uh, Cedric, Cedric Mizero. Cedric Mizero, yes, who is a 25 years old, a genius, um, random designer who did amazing. What Cedric brought to this film, because it's not just the costumes, right? Yeah. It's, the, it's the production design. design, the set design, the whole nine. And he selected his crew of artists, a collective of artists that he brought to, you know, to work on this thing. Uh, his vision is extraordinary. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Cedric Mizero is his name. Um, yeah. Uh, and, and so from there, you have uh, the hair and makeup is done by Lady Soulfly, um, a.k.a. Uh, Tanya Melendez. Um, uh, the sound in Rwanda was done by Eugene Safali. Uh, our sound designer here uh, it was Blake Lee, who I think Blake. is in the house. Are you uh, here? Yep, and yep. Skip Leavesay, who mixed it. Yes. Um, of course, there's also uh, the, our amazing actors, uh, who are all extraordinary artists and performers in their own right. Um, Kaya Free. Kaya Free, who, who plays, plays Mataluza, Mataluza, who is an is, amazing rapper. Is an amazing rapper from Burundi. Um, Sherry Lisheja. Who uh, plays Neptune, is an extraordinary singer, dancer, performer. Um, you and have. also Cecil Kariebkwa, who is um, our uh, Cesaria Evora, <laughs> yeah. uh, who plays the nun and who who is making her first appearance in the film, and she is uh, 17 of her. <laughs> yeah. And so it's, Extraordinary. A, it's an honor to have her yeah. in, in this film. Yeah, the, I mean, there's all, every, it's the cream of the crop of extraordinary Burundian and Rwandan artists that all worked on this film, our entire crew. It's R Rwandan and Burundian. We worked with 100 people traveling around the country. Um, uh, Chris Schwaga, extraordinary. Um, Who created the lights with me. Yeah. yeah. Um, He's a, a photographer, amazing yeah. photographer. Um, yeah, so it's uh, it's 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 that that uh, that full the full region was there with with yeah. with you know talent from Kenya, talent from Burundi, from Rwanda. Um, yeah. And then there's some musicians I worked with. Um, so in in the sound, you'll hear uh, my peeps, the Dragons of Zinth. You'll hear my boy Ganja Sufi. You'll hear uh, some work by. Uh, Ted Hearn, um, you'll, you'll hear, um, uh, I, th there's so many people. Uh, <laughs> My brightest Diamond, um, th yeah, th it goes on and on and on and on. So, 
yeah, there's a bunch of musicians. And that's, for me, that was one of the biggest things about realizing that a film was possible was, was the realization that a film is collaborative. Mm. So it's not expected for you to have to do everything. Um, you know, even if at times... <laughs> <laughs> it feels like you are. <laughs> Look, the, this film is at the very beginning of its journey. It is really special for us to have the opportunity to be part of its early, an early chapter of its journey. But um, the future of this film is in your hands, too. Tell yes, it is. And I don't mean to cut you no, off, please. but I do just want to say it. The future of this film is in your hands. And if you like it, tweet about it. If you don't like it, call somebody, you know? Just, <laughs> call, just call them and tell them, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Anicia Ozeman, Saul Williams. Congratulations.